Hello and welcome back. In this video we'll be discussing how symmetry relates to chirality. So any compound with only one chirality center is going to be a chiral compound. It's going to have a mirror image also that will make that will be its enantiomer. So when you have more than one chirality center the compound may or may not be chiral because it may actually possess a plane of symmetry. So let's consider these stereoisomers below which possess two chirality centers. So we have here trans 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane okay, and cis 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. So notice the trans isomer is chiral. Why is that? Because what if we uh, drew the enantiomer for this molecule? So we're going to draw its mirror image. Okay, so I'm going to draw the mirror image for this one. So what I'm going to do is swap the, the configuration at each chiral center. And I can do that by swapping any two substituents at that center. So remember this is a hydrogen going down, hydrogen coming up. So if I swap the methyl and hydrogen at each chirality center, then I've created the enantiomer. You can prove that by flipping this one around in front of the one on the left and you can see the methyl groups will reflect on each other and the hydrogens will reflect on each other. So here we have a pair of enantiomers. Okay. For this molecule on the right, what would happen if I drew its enantiomer? Let's go ahead and swap the configuration at those chiral centers. Let's draw the enantiomer of that molecule. Okay, well I've created the mirror image here for sure, but is this the enantiomer of that? No it isn't, because if I flip this molecule over, I've got both of those methyl groups going up now. Okay, so actually these guys are the same. Okay, so for that reason, uh, this the cis isomer here has a plane of symmetry. Okay, for that reason, this cis isomer is not chiral. And notice that it has a plane of symmetry, which means it'll be superimposable on its mirror image. Okay, and so that's why it's not a chiral compound. And it also, we also can determine that by seeing if it has a plane of symmetry. So the one thing you can do is make the enantiomer and see if they're superimposable like I just did, or you can look for a plane of symmetry in the molecule to see if it is chiral or achiral. <coughs> so if a molecule has a plane of symmetry, it's achiral. Or if it's superimposable on its mirror image, it's achiral. It won't rotate plane polarized light. Okay. So molecules that have an even number of chirality centers, if they have the same substituents on those chirality centers, they can possess a plane of symmetry. They don't always, but they can. And those are called meso compounds. Another way to test if a compound is meso is to see if it's identical to its mirror image. So draw the mirror image of this cis isomer like we just did and show that it can be superimposed. Or you can make a model and see if they would fit on top of each other. So when a compound is identical to its mirror image, it's not chiral. It's in fact achiral. <coughs> okay. So if a compound has a plane of symmetry, it is achiral. Now sometimes compounds lack a plane of symmetry, but they may still be achiral because they can have a reflectional symmetry. Now we're not really going to see any of those in our homework problems, but um, it's possible to have that, okay? So this molecule has reflectional symmetry about a central point. So if I flip this side over this way, you can see that it reflects, that part of the molecule reflects back on the other, and this part reflects back on this part this methyl group would reflect back on the methyl group going back. So this molecule has reflectional symmetry, but it's still achiral because of this point of inflection. Now, um, we're not going to have these in this class. So this is just an example of how sometimes molecules can be achiral even though they don't have a plane of symmetry, okay? They do, ha they do still have chiral centers. Alright, so rotational symmetry is 
irrelevant to chirality, and we'll look at some examples of that later on. Well, I'll go back up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So like if you rotate this molecule, it might appear okay, that it's um, rotating over and that it would be achiral. But that is irrelevant to the fact that it is um, chiral. It's still non-superimposable on its mirror image and therefore is chiral. Okay, so a compound that has a plane of symmetry is achiral. A compound without a plane of symmetry will usually be chiral, but there are exceptions like we just saw, like a center of inversion. Okay, so a compound that has chirality centers but is achiral because of symmetry is called a meso compound, and these compounds are meso compounds. So we have a chiral center here. Let's look at this one on the left. It has an OH coming out, a hydrogen going back. This path around the molecule, which is different from this path, okay? So this path has a carbon going this way with two hydrogens. This path has a carbon with an OH and a hydrogen. So those paths are different, okay? So um, if we consider the other carbon, we've got another chiral center that has an OH coming out, a hydrogen going back, this path around the molecule, which is different from this path. So we have two chiral centers there. But because those chiral centers have a plane of symmetry such that they can reflect back on each other, this molecule is called a meso compound, making it achiral. And it's also superimposable on its mirror image. Okay, so if we would predict that this stereoisomer, this molecule would have 2 to the n stereoisomers, so it has 2 to the 2 chiral centers, okay, which means that it have, could have 4 stereoisomers, but we have less than that because 2 of those stereoisomers are superimposable on each other. Let's try to convince ourselves of that. So let's, um, let's consider, okay, this molecule in a Hallworth projection. So we have, let's say we have an OH going up. Okay, so we have this chiral center here. We have two possibilities. We can either have an OH going up or an OH going down. In other words, we can have that OH coming out at us or we can have that OH going away. Now let's look at the second chiral center. Now we could have that OH going down or that OH coming up. Now I'm not talking about this molecule here. I'm talking about all possible stereoisomers. So in this one that I've drawn, I have one of the OHs going up and the other one coming down. Now I could have another stereoisomer where I have the enantiomer of that, where I have the first OH going down and the second OH coming up. Notice these are enantiomers of each other. If I flip the one on the right around in front of the one on the left, it actually is its mirror image. They are enantiomers of each other and they're not superimposable. If I slide the left one over onto the one on the right, this OH will be down instead of that hydrogen. This OH will be up instead of this hydrogen. So they're not superimposable. They are mirror images. These are enantiomers, okay? Now let's draw the next two possible stereoisomers. So remember we have four possible, okay? So if we have both OH is coming up, that would be a possibility. And the other possibility is that we have both OH is going down. Okay, so what if I reflect the, this one over onto this one? Are they mirror images of each other? Yes, they are. These are mirror images of each other also, but they are superimposable which precludes them from being enantiomers. They are actually the same compound. So if you have a compound with two stereocenters, if they have the, the same four groups attached to those stereocenters, then they can be, they can exist as a pair of enantiomers and a meso compound. Okay, they have the same four groups attached 
we have a, a pair of enantiomers and a meso compound. Okay, so work that out for these next two compounds and you'll see that you have that same possibility for this one. This particular stereoisomer of this compound is a, the meso form and this particular stereoisomer of this compound is also the meso form. So you can have a non-meso form for these as well. So you should probably get some paper and work that out or build a model and convince yourself. For example, what if this bromine was going back and this one was coming out? Or what if this one was going back and this one was coming out? So those would be enantiomers to each other. They would not be meso. This is the meso form of this compound and the same thing for this one. Okay. All right, so um, each of the following molecules has one plane of symmetry. Find that plane of symmetry and and see if that then is a meso compound, okay? So here, this molecule A, this is a little bit tricky, so I'm going to go ahead and draw it differently. Let's draw it head on. Okay, this is A. Now I've got a chlorine and a bromine, and I've got a methyl and a methyl. Now how is this, how does this thing have a plane of symmetry? It's a little bit tricky, so I'm going to do it like this. That plane of symmetry is slicing those atoms in half, okay, right down the middle. For the chlorine and the bromine, half of the chlorine atom is, is let me go ahead and redraw my molecules back in. Okay, I got CH3 here, bromine here. So half of the, I'm oh, sorry, that was a chlorine and bromine. Ugh. Erasing the wrong thing. Half of the chlorine is is um, reflecting back on the other half. Half of the bromine is reflecting back on the other half. Okay. All right, the next molecule has a plane of symmetry going this way. The next molecule has a plane of symmetry going this way. The next molecule has a plane of symmetry going this way. And the next molecule right down through the center of the molecule plane of symmetry. Okay, so play around with these and think about them. So let's look at D a little bit more, okay? In fact, let's compare D to a molecule that's a little bit different from D. Let's say we had chlorine and OH. I'm going to erase this upper portion, upper example. Okay, now looking at these two chiral centers, let's, con let's try to figure out all the enantiomers that we could have. Remember 2 to the n, where, two, where n is equal to the number of chiral centers, means that we could have 2 to the 2 or 4 possible enantiomers. So for this molecule, Okay, with the chlorine and the OH here, we can have the chlorine coming back and the OH uh, come. I'm, car, I'm sorry, the chlorine coming out and the OH coming out. I can also have the chlorine going back and the OH going back. Okay, so this would be these would be enantiomers to each other. Okay, they are not meso compounds because the chlorine can't be superimposed on top of the OH. If I flip this molecule over, the OH would be on top of this chlorine and the chlorine would be on top of this OH. So they are not they are not the same compound. They are enantiomers. Now, if I draw one going back and one coming out, I'll have the diastereomer of those. So if I have chlorine coming out and OH going back, I have a diastereomer to each of those. I can draw its enantiomer by drawing the chlorine going back and the OH coming out. Okay? Those are enantiomers to each other. Okay? So for this molecule, I don't have the same four groups attached. So I don't have a plane of symmetry. I don't have a meso compound. But when we consider D itself, it has the same four groups attached at each of those chiral centers. So this is the meso form of that compound. Each of those chiral centers has OH, okay, hydrogen, 
ethyl and this path around the molecule, which is the same as the OH, hydrogen, ethyl, and this path around the molecule. Okay, those are the same. Now I could draw the, the mirror image of that a particular molecule by drawing the OH is going back, but notice that it's superimposable on the one on the left. So those are the same, which means I don't have that set of enantiomers. Those are the same because that's the meso form. It has a mirror, it has a um, plane of symmetry right down the center. Now what if I draw one of those OHs going back and the other one coming out? And then I can draw its enantiomer by drawing the left OH coming out and the right one going back. Now these are mirror images of each other because I've swapped the wedges and dashes, but they are not superimposable on each other. The relationship between these two is enantiomers. Okay, and make a model of this and convince yourself. And they are diastereomers to the meso form. So this molecule only has three stereoisomers instead of the full four because it has a meso form. Okay? So let's consider uh, doing that same thing. I already did this one. Let's draw all possible stereoisomers for the following compound. Each possible stereoisomer should be drawn only once. So I just did that B. I did it right here. Okay? So let's consider A where we have um, the methyl groups uh, in different configurations. So I could have both of those methyls coming out. Okay, I could have both of those methyls going back. I could have one of the methyls coming out and one going back. And I could have the other one going back and the other one coming out. Okay, so remember 2 to the n would give us 2 to the second, which would be four possible stereoisomers. So let's, let's consider all of these. These two on the right are enantiomers of each other because they are non-superimposable mirror images. If I flipped this one over, it would not superimpose on the one on the left. It, they are mirror images of each other. They are enantiomers. But this set on the left are the same compound. If I flip, uh, let's call these A, B, C, and D. If I flip B over, it'll slide right on top of A, meaning this is the meso form of that molecule. So we only get three stereoisomers, not the full four. We get a set of enantiomers and a meso compound because these two chiral centers have the same four groups attached. If they had different groups, then they, there would be the full four possible stereoisomers. All right, thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.